Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the waste flow diagram, a tool for rapid assessment of waste flows and plastic leakage into the environment. The main objective of this video is to introduce the waste flow diagram tool through the presentation of a recent case study of its application on Isla Holbosch in Mexico, in the framework of the GRZ project Circular Caribbean. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Camilo, and I am a Municipal Solid Waste Management Specialist. I am a member of the RWA Resources and Waste Advisory Group, a consulting group specialized in resources and waste management. In this video, I will walk you step by step through the process of assessing plastic leakages into the environment in Hisla Holbosch through the application of the Waste Flow Diagram tool. Before I begin, I would like to thank the municipality of Lazaro Cardenas, the NGO Sentinelas del Agua, and the consulting firm SUEMA for sharing and providing the results of the waste flow diagram application on Isla Holbosch, which we will use for this video. Let's start with a quick introduction of the waste flow diagram tool and the resources available. This tool was jointly developed in 2020 by the GIZ, the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology, IAWAG, the University of Leeds and West Aware, with the main objective to support the evaluation of municipal solid waste management systems and their impact in terms of plastic pollution. The waste flow diagram is based on the set of quantitative data on waste management and field observation which are introduced into an Excel tool in order to estimate the quantities and distribution of plastic leaking into the environment. The tool is free of access and use with many resources available online. The tool itself in Excel together with the user manual can be downloaded directly from the GIZ website. In addition, several tutorial videos are also available online. These three introductory videos published in 2021 are quite short and provide a general overview of the objectives and operation of the tool. More recently, two new videos were made available, which present in more detail the different steps for the implementation of the waste flow diagram, together with a fictitious case study, the city of Megalopolis. Finally, the waste flow diagram online portal, available in English and Spanish, provides a centralized access to all the resources I just mentioned, as well as the visualization of results from different cities around the world. The portal also has an additional functionality to upload data and to add new case studies. Within the framework of the Circular Caribbean project, several training modules were prepared in Spanish and English to support pilot initiatives in several countries in the region, including Mexico. The project included the preparation of additional material in Spanish, such as the partial translation of the waste flow diagram user manual. This material in Spanish is available on request to the project team whose contact information can be found at the end of this video. Before going into the application of the waste flow diagram, let's discover together the case study chosen for this video, Isla Holbosch in Mexico. Isla Holbosch is a peninsula located in the state of Quintana Roo and is part of the municipality of Lazaro Cardenas. The island is bordered to the north by the Caribbean Sea and to the south by a small bay, which must be crossed by boat to access the island from the mainland. Isla Holbosch insular characteristic has direct consequences on the solid waste management and collection system in place. This system starts with primary waste collection on the island, followed by a transfer into larger trucks and then use the ferry to cross the bay to the mainland and finally waste is transported to Katunilkin landfill. Another particularity of Isla Holbosch is the importance of tourism, which represents the main economic activity on the island. This has a direct impact on the amount of waste produced, which is very high in relation to the fixed population of the island. Due to the potential negative impact of pollution on tourism, the issue of plastic pollution reduction is strategically very important for the sector. The implementation process of the waste flow diagram 
on his La Holbosch follow different stages that will be detailed in the coming section of this video. First, the preparation phase followed by the collection of baseline data needed for the tool, including both quantitative data on solid waste management and field observation. Once the baseline data was collected, it was introduced into the Excel tool and the results visualized and analyzed to be able to finally communicate and engage with decision makers. In the specific case of Isla Holbosch, the preparation stage was quite important with the creation of a multi-stakeholder team, including members from the municipality of Lazaro Cardenas, the NGO Sentinelas del Agua, the environmental consulting firm SWEMA, in charge of the development of the municipality's solid waste management strategy, and the GIZ. All these stakeholders received a comprehensive training on the use of the waste flow diagram tool. The contents of the training and the materials developed in both Spanish and English can be obtained by contacting the Carib Circular project, as mentioned earlier. We will now move on to the main quantitative data required to model the waste streams within the waste flow diagram. The first data entry is the population, mainly used to estimate the amount of waste generated in the study area. In Hisla Holbosch, the permanent population is quite low, around 2,300 inhabitants, according to data from electoral registry and educational system. The non-permanent population, composed mainly of tourists and workers from the tourism sector, is much larger, with up to 5,000 tourists daily during the peak season. The waste generation per capita was obtained by summing up the generation of household waste and waste from tourism and commercial facilities. For this reason, it has a very high value in relation to international standards. The theoretical waste composition was obtained using a mix of data from previous and recent characterization on the island and in other locations in the country on domestic waste, as well as waste from businesses and tourism. Data from the plastic waste recovery and recycling sector was obtained mainly through interviews with the municipality and local stakeholders working in the sector. These are only a few and the quantities recovered, essentially PET, are quite low. Finally, the quantities of waste collected, transported and disposed of at the final disposal site were estimated based on collection records and estimates of the truckloads based on their volumes. This was the preferred option as no waiting system was available, neither at the transfer station nor at the landfill. Using this data, we obtained two very different collection rates for primary and secondary collection. The primary collection rate within the island is about 65%. However, only a limited fraction of this waste is transported to the landfill, and more than half remains stockpiled at the transfer station on the island. The secondary collection rate from the island to the landfill is only 28%. Now that we have seen the main quantitative input data for the waste flow diagram, let's review the main qualitative data, which comes from field observations on plastic leakages and their fate in the environment. For leakages, observations are made for each stage of the solid waste management system, from collection to final disposal. The objective is to identify some key characteristics having a direct impact on the probability of plastic leakage, also called leakage influences. For example, for the transport stage, these characteristics are the level of load compared to the capacity of the trucks, the waste containment, which is the use of plastic bag or disposal in bulk, and the use or not of cover for the vehicles. For each of these influences, we determine from field observation what the leakage potential will be, low, medium, high, or very high. For this, we use the reference tables available in the user manual and the Excel tool as a guide and compare with the observed situation. For the example of the load of collection vehicle, if the load of most collection vehicles exceeds their capacity, a high leakage potential will apply to this influence. On the opposite, if the load of most collection vehicles does not exceed capacity, the leakage potential will be low. Now that we have seen the general principle, let's look together at the main observations for the case study of Isla Holbosch. For the collection stage, we have a very high 
leakage potential for containers due to the lack of appropriate containers. Waste is stored by generators in bags and boxes and exposed to animals, such as birds and raccoon, with long waiting times for collection services, particularly outside the central area of the island. The leakage potential is considered high for the loading method, as it is common for bags to break during this process. The leakage potential is also high for primary transport, as the collection vehicles are not completely enclosed. Waste transfer is a critical stage of waste collection on Isla Holbosch, and for this phase, the leakage potential is considered medium. There is a dedicated space to serve as a transfer station, which is positive, but it lacks adequate infrastructure and equipment. The transfer method, which involves the accumulation of waste on the ground and the use of a wheel loader, increases risk of waste leakages into the environment. Now let's move on to the transport phase. As you can see on the picture, the situation on Isla Holbosch is very particular, with the trucks being transported by ferry to the mainland, increasing the risk of direct leakage into the sea. Trucks are generally loaded to the limit or over their capacity, resulting in a high leakage potential. Many bags break during the transfer process, justifying a high leakage potential for containment. And finally, none of the vehicles are covered, corresponding to a very high leakage potential for this influence. As mentioned before, the sorting and recovery sector is not very developed on the island, and the extraction and transport method are considered to have a low leakage potential. The final disposal stage has six main characteristics that are considered to evaluate the leakage potential. In the case of Hisla Olbosch, the final disposal facility in use is called Kantunilkin Landfill. Its location was studied to avoid flood-prone areas and the potential for leakage due to environmental risk is considered null. However, the region is highly affected by storms and cyclones, and for this reason, the exposure to surface runoff and high winds is considered high. The characteristics related to landfill management are all considered to have high or very high leakage potential. Due to limitation in terms of equipment and resources available for proper waste management on site. The objective of the observations on FATE is to estimate the distribution of plastic leakages among four sectors of the environment, also called FATEs, which are retained on land, in drainage systems, open burning, and water bodies. If we look at uncollected waste from Isla Holbosch, the two main fates are on land and in water bodies, both with a very high factor. These factors can be explained mainly by the proximity of the island to the ocean, the significant accumulation of waste at the transfer station, and the high risk of leakage from the transfer station into water bodies during storms, floods, and cyclones. Regarding fates from leakages from disposal facility, it is considered very high for inland, as waste accumulation can be observed in the surroundings of the landfill boundaries. For water bodies, the factor is considered very low because of the large distance, 36 kilometers, between the landfill and the coastline. But it is not new because of some open dumps located closer to the coast, occasionally used for waste disposal. Now let's quickly see how the user interface of the waste flow diagram Excel works, how the data is introduced and the results displayed. You can see that it is composed of 10 worksheets, including information sheets, data entry sheets, and result sheets. Let's start with the four information sheets, which cannot be modified or edited. The first one, here in dark blue, called the waste flow diagram tool, includes a basic description of the tool. The second one, in purple, is called Quick Reference Tool and contains all the reference tables on leakages and fate factors. The blue one, called Settings, provides some details about the tool parameters. And finally, the red one, called Troubleshooting here, gives some useful tips for solving the most common problems that may occur during the use of the tool. Now we move on to the data entry sheets. 
We have the sheet called case study details here in light blue to introduce general information about the case study. Then there is the main sheet for data entry called baseline data entry here in orange. In the table, the green cells are those we, where data should be entered. These cells are located in three columns of the table, the value column, the metadata column here to enter details about the sources of information and the reliability column corresponding to the level of confidence that we have in the data. We can choose between low, medium and high. The table includes brief description of the different data entry points and how to obtain them when hovering the mouse over the I symbol for information here. Other important cells of the table in this section for quantitative data are the check cells, which are normally gray, but turn red when there is an obvious problem in the data entered. For example, the waste composition here should sum up 100%. And in case the sum is lower or higher, the check cell turns red. Section one, two, and three of the table refer to quantitative data, while section four and five here are used to introduce qualitative data resulting from field observation. The table allows us to choose between different value you can see here very low, low, medium, high, very high, based on the observation that we will make uh, on the field. When we click here on the name of the characteristic, it gives us access to the, the related description table that will help us to choose the value according to the field observation. And here we can go back to the table to enter the information. In addition to the baseline data entry sheet, we also have here a complementary sheet called scenario data entry, which is used to model different future scenarios, up to three scenarios. This table is optional and has not yet been used in our case study. Let us now look together at the two main sheets used to visualize the results. The first one here below in green is called result summary. In the first table here, we can see the result of the plastic waste flows. The quantities produced, collected, recovered, and disposed of. The second table focuses on the results on plastic leakages and fates. It includes estimate of the quantities of unmanaged plastic waste, the contribution of the different phases of solid waste management on the plastic leakages, and the fate distribution on land, openly burned, in drains and water systems. Second output sheet is called flow diagrams in yellow. It gives us a basic version of the flow diagram here at the top and below the resources to produce the main visual output support of the waste flow diagram analysis, which is called the Sankey diagram. A Sankey diagram is a type of flow diagram in which the width of the arrows is proportional to the flow represented. It is used to visualize material transfers, in our case, plastic waste, and the losses during these transfers. Here, we can see two examples of Sankey waste flow diagram. To produce this diagram, we have to use an external platform called Sankeymatic.com and follow some steps described here in this box. Let's follow these steps together. First, we open the sankematic.com website. Then, in our Excel, we select this gray box with the code corresponding to our results, and we copy it. We go back to the web page and paste the copied code here in the input section. Here we are. We delete the quotation mark at the beginning at, at the end of the code. 
here and here. And we can press the button show to get the first version of our waste flow diagram. Now let's let's improve the display. In the nodes option, we change the width to five. And for the color, we use one color and we select black. Here in the flows option, we select the opacity to one. Then we go to the labels and unit option. We unmark show labels. We are going to add these labels manually later. Then in the layout options, we choose to place all flows and point at the right edge. Here we are. Now we are going to drag the nodes, which are the black parts of the diagram and the flows to obtain a more suitable layout. So the main objective here is to avoid to have some of the flows crossing each other within the diagram. This manipulation can take a bit of time, especially at the beginning, but once you get used to it, it does get much easier. We are So once we are satisfied, we export the image using the export button here. We can save as PNG. Finally, we open the image in an editing software such as Microsoft PowerPoint, and we manually add the text labels and the related quantities and percentages. We find these quantities and percentages in the Excel here in this table, we have the labels, the quantities, and the percentages that we will use to introduce this manually in our Sankey diagram. And this way, we finalize the Sankey diagram for our case study of Isla Holbush. Now that we have seen all the main stages for the elaboration of the waste flow diagram, let's quickly analyze the main results for Isla Holbosch. We obtain a total leakage of plastic waste into the environment estimated to 506 tons per year, of which 36% ends up in water bodies. The value is quite high in relation to the population of Isla Holbosch and shows us the importance of improving the local waste management system. The results also highlight that one of the priority is to improve the collection rates, with 66% of uncollected waste on the island, and in particular, the secondary transport, in order to avoid accumulation of waste at the transfer station. Before concluding, I will quickly introduce you to the Waste Flow Diagram online platform that can be accessed through the address wfd.rwm.global. This website includes some general information about the tool and also links to all main resources presented at the beginning of this video. We load the platform via the portal button at the top of the page. Within the platform, we can visualize some case studies on the map. Let's see the example of Tulum in Mexico. So we can see the flow diagram, the Sankey diagram, and the result summary with a presentation very similar to what we've seen in the Excel. With the platform, we can also explore the data, for example, in the menu, can explore the data, for example, for one country to compare the results between different cities in the same countries. We have now reached the end of this video on the waste flow diagram and the presentation of the case study of Isla Holbosch in Mexico. 
Thank you all for your attention and I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. If you have any question or need some additional information, please contact the Carib Circular Project team at this email address. Thank you.